Hello everyone and welcome back to the Death Stranding playthrough. This is episode 14. Last time we reunited uh, Mama and Lochner together, we got some BB conspiracies from uh, from Dead Man, and we're currently without uh, our little Lou right now. We're BB-less, but I got carried away off screen and <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to do some deliveries and uh, with like people in the region, uh, in the central region to get their stars up, you know, I'll just like run back and forth with Lost Cargo. I got distracted. I spent way too long instead setting up an entire zip line from Port Knot City to Capital Knot City. Um, and it's great. Uh, I did the exact amount where I've now maxed out the chi my chiral network allocation uh, for this for this area so far, but I I have with the help of a couple of other zip lines from some other people uh, with some online ones, I have uh, have created uh, a zip line that will go all the way to the entrance of Capital Knot City, and uh, I think that's a good way to spend my time, don't you? It's great. A region that I'm probably never going to come back to, or like really won't come back to that often at all. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to help out people who do come back here with uh, with uh, with zip lines. Look at the placement of this zip line. I'm pretty proud of this one. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of this one. Put it right at the top of this rock. Um, I'm actually happy to see that this one actually got some likes because some other ones haven't. But this one, good. Let's keep going, and then we can go to the next one. So I put another one on this rock uh, right here. Um, let's just ignore the huge crater in the ground. I definitely didn't get killed and die by the hands of a BT. This one has no likes. There you go. Interestingly enough, everyone's liked that one all the way up there, but not this one, which I also think is in a pretty good spot. Um, yes, might have, uh, might have gotten killed. Uh, while trying to do zip lining, a little bit careless, uh, made a pretty crater in the ground, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but, but, um, we can keep going on my zip line. Interestingly enough, yeah, that one doesn't have likes, but everyone's liked the one that's all the way up the top there. Very proud of those two. Uh, the rest are just kind of in uh, very standard, uh, very standard spots. But regardless, I'm I'm super pleased with how the zipline function even works. Uh, so I can go to another one that I've put all the way up here, or I can go to that one there. So I've put a pathway with ziplines that go all the way to the way station out there, or I've gone up and put one here, which is at the mule camp, I think. Yes, it's just by the mule camp. Um, and then we can keep going on the floor. Hang on, there's another one. All right, I didn't put any others up there. I'm remembering my pathway slightly wrong, but there's another path. Oh, I'm a bit early, that's why. Hold on. Uh, so there are paths. That are, there's one that goes up to the mule camp if you want to get up there. There's one that goes down here. This is an online one. Uh, and then I put an, I put one here. So you can shimmy across right underneath the distribution center, if you'd like. So you can come right in here at the distro center. There it is. Lovely. Uh, and then from here, you can go all the way across here. And we're getting close to the the second the second mule camp from here. Um, so once you get to this point, there's then another one that I've put at the top of that hill up there. So we'll then shoot our way across to this one. Uh, that is not my zipline. Someone's put one on the ground there. Um, because I've put another one from here. You go to this one. And then now we're at the way station. And there's another one in the distance that takes you to the way station. Or uh, you can go off to the right here where I've put one. So there we go. Up here. You want to go to the way station, or do you want to go up here? We'll go up here, because we're going to Capital Knot City. 
I love seeing the, the structures that people have built here, like jumps and bridges and all of that. It seems that there's no roads that can be built in this area, which does make sense. It's not really much of a, a road region. There you go. There's your mule camp or the way station, depending on where you want to go. So we'll go up above the mule camp. Yeah, everybody's got jumps galore out here. We're going to go up this way. from here you can now go to this side because this is not much of a pointy area I had to put two one on each side so you just can kind of go over it and then from here uh, there's another online one that had already been placed here so I just made use of that and then I believe um, there's a couple of online ones in this area and then I've put one right at the entrance uh, of, of Capital Knot so there you go uh, there's our Horizon Zero Dawn hologram. Um, we'll now go to this other online one through the legs of our Horizon Zero Dawn creature. And then from here uh, has my final my final zip line. And there you go. So I've constructed, uh, except for, for a minor few zip lines, I've zip lined my way from Capital Knot to, to Port Knot. And there you go. I'm proud of that one. I think that's really cool. <laughs> so it's a it's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a journey to go from one side to the other, but it's definitely the definitely the fastest one. Uh, so with uh, with that little show and tell, uh, this episode we are going to go back to the central region. Uh, I do intend to another time <laughs> still um, get those stars up with my with my other. Um, with my other porters, sorry, preppers and, and stuff like that. But uh, we're going to continue doing our main orders for Sam that we need to do so we can hopefully be reunited with our BB because not being able to detect BTs is, uh, is a hell of a thing. So show and tell complete. That's my zipline. Very proud of it. Let's get back to the central region now uh, and we can, uh, we can get back to the main story. All right, we're back at Mountain Knot City. You know what that means. It's drinking time for Porter time. It's time to get this show on the road, baby. Time to get that stamina via accelerated heart rate. That's right. Give me my additional stamina increase for Sam. Heart rate increase for me. Ooh, baby. Monster energy drink. <laughs> it it never ends. Okay. Uh, we're gonna leave we're gonna leave the private room with our lovely increase to stamina. We're gonna get out of here. And move into pick up the next order. Uh, we'll have to see what happens. So uh, last episode we finished with the delivering the equipment uh, from the doctor to um, to the people out in the mountains to get them the urgent medical attention that they that they needed. So we need to take on a new order at the at the mountaineer, so I do need to go back up to him. That's what we need to do. Okay. We'll do that now. Get these bots all sorted out with their expert delivery service. Elite courier. Nice. I like that. Uh, let's get the bots delivering some other stuff. Send them on out. Now. Uh, we need to go up to the Mountaineer, so that was where, you know, we were originally and I, I left. I think I can do a fragile jump. Um, I think I can do a fragile jump to that safe house. However, um, I think I did a fragile jump. There was a safe house uh, nearby the Mountaineer and I think it stored my stuff in a private locker there when I fast traveled to the uh, eastern region. 
to build my zipline. So if I, I'll have a look if we can fragile jump to. Uh, I think it was yeah, it was this one. So this because this is the mountaineer. So we'll go to this safe house. Everything has started to deteriorate. <laughs> She's so happy to see me and crying her tears of chiral and chiral energy. And off we go. Such an interesting concept and one that I really like for fast travel. It's very neat. It's very, very, very neat indeed. Handled with love. So I believe it's time for Porter here as well. I believe in the private locker of this safe room should be where all of my stuff is <laughs> before I travel to the Eastern region. So this actually works out quite well. A lovely safe house. So activate this channel. Private locker, yes, it is all of my stuff. So we are just going to take all of my stuff back. <laughs> Give me everything, please. No weapons and stuff. Interesting. Okay, automatically arranged. Um, did I, have I got extra blood bags? I do have extra blood bags. Um, let me place those in the private locker. I don't need I don't need a whole bunch of them. Um, grenades in the pouch. Okay, looks good. I don't have any I don't have any weapons apparently, except for those except for those grenades. So I think I I think I carried light um, when I when I made my way up here. I don't think we'll need anything except for that. I just need to make sure I got my boots <laughs> and my skeleton all sorted. And my climbing equipment. All right, we can now resume. We're taking on the order from the mountaineer. Orders for Sam. So a photograph delivery to the photographer. Okay, that's our order. Um, just trying to look at the path we'll be taking. Okay. Um. I'll fabricate a ladder because I don't have one, but I've got climbing anchors, I've got PCCs. Um, I don't think I'll need any weapons, just purely based on the fact that I can't really detect anything at the moment and we won't be going through a mule camp, so I'll leave the machine, I'll leave the assault rifles and, you know, stuff like that alone. Hematic grenades will be fine, so, yeah, we'll just carry a ladder and some climbing anchors with us. Now, a f a one photograph that weighs 15 kilograms, apparently. Crazy. Alright, we'll head out. Order assigned. Okay, so we need to go and deliver the photograph. So that's the, that's the main order for Sam. Let's see if I can get a... Weapons restriction. Hmm. I think my vehicle is still... I mean, it might not be, but we'll see. Someone's built a bridge here, that's nice. We'll see if my trike is still located uh, downstairs, down this zip line, because it's been a little while since I've been in this in this region. It's also very, very bright. <laughs> Why am I hearing jingle bells? <laughs> Why am I hearing jingle bells? Did I imagine that? Where's Santa Claus? You know that Big Boss believes in Santa Claus, right? There's a Santa Claus hidden in these mountains. I demand to know about it. <laughs> That'd be so weird. You just hear it, like, see a sleigh going for it. Alright. 
down we go. Now, is my trike still going to be there? That's the that's the real question. Oh my god, it is. It is still there. Good. A lot of people have rested in here as well. Okay. Lovely. We got a trike. Okay. Just trying to take a look at our lost cargo and what we're dealing with. Stuff that all goes back up to the mountaineer or chemicals. What a shame that the BTs have to ruin the music. That was really nice. Do you know what's not nice? The fact that I have not successfully been able to go on over a jump so many times where it's just like, all right, cool, let's do this jump. And it hits like a bump and it ruins the whole jump. And then I just, my bike is destroyed. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> That's very, how fun is that? Super exciting. Super exciting. And then... We're not even in a BT area anymore, but we just skirted the outskirts of it, so it interrupted the song. So that's uh, that's a shame. That was a very that was a very beautiful tune. I love how much low roar uh, is in is in this game. It's uh it's very very beautiful. I just saw that there was an auto paver here, so I was like, I may as well pick up these. Um, I may as well pick it up and donate it to this one because these roads are very expensive. Uh, I did put a hell of a lot of materials into the one down there. There's like one there that I've put a bunch of materials into. But, there we go. We need to get across there. But we're in BT territory. Are you guys, are you guys ready for no BB? But also in BT territory and in Timefall.
Let's see how we do, huh? I do have uh, hermetic grenades, and what I will point out as <coughs> something that I am aware of, because I did get killed encountering some BTs without BB, uh, is when you get right up in their face, they actually do still appear. They'll appear to you when you get like right up to them. They get visible. So we're kind of I'm kind of banking on that at the moment. That if I run into one, we can quickly chuck a grenade on it to succeed. There's a lot of vehicles that have just been like left and abandoned here. I really should make deliveries more to the older preppers as well. Um, because I don't want to, I don't want to just like move on from them and then never interact them with them again, you know, because it like, I really like the whole, like keeping in contact with the, the older preppers that we've made contact with. That's another reason why I made like a zip line that went all the way through, um, a zip line that went all the way through, um, the Eastern region. Cause I'd like to, I'd like to make sure that I could go back to it, uh, and visit it. You know? But in a way that I can um complete orders in a in an easier way. Just trying to find a good opening for this for this ladder. See if I can meet this rock. Yeah make my own bridge. <laughs> Wonderful. Rock to rock. There you go. And then there's a bridge that goes over that one. Everything has started to deteriorate and it wants to let me know every single time. <laughs> um, I am going to... Because this is this ah oh, this one has all the medals. This one has all the medals donated to it already. I'm gonna try and get into the habit of uh, picking up materials a bit more and sending them to putting them on these structures to at least upgrade things over time. So we'll put it in there. Okay, how far away are we from the photographer? 500 meters, um, but I can use a bike. And looks like I picked up so a large cargo delivery for the for the elder. So it could be uh, it it will be in my best interest to go back um, to our like lovely preppers uh, all the way out here. Can I? I need to filter out a bunch of this stuff. Let me just turn off everything. <laughs> <laughs> Turn off everything. Uh, the Elder's only at two stars. The Craftsman's only at three stars. The Engineer's at three stars. Um, Peter Englert goes up when he goes up, I guess. Uh, Lake Knot City's almost at five. Um, distribution Center's almost at five. Collector's at one. Uh, junk Dealer's at three. Film Director's at three. Uh, Kyle Artis is at two and a half. You know, stuff like that. There's a lot of these that have not been... Um, given attention in the same way that I gave the Eastern region attention because I was like addicted to doing all the deliveries and I'm like, I want to do everything. And I still do. Uh, but I've just got caught in like, definitely got caught in like the flow of just doing like the orders for Sam and then uh, doing standard orders with my, with my bots uh, that don't get as many likes, you know? Uh, so when I get BB back, uh, I'm going to make it a, a goal of mine um, and I will probably do this off screen to save time because it will be very time consuming is I'm going to try and build up the, the central regions, um, connection levels with all of the, all of the preppers as well. So that's certainly my intention to, um, to make sure we get that done. So we'll do more like of a focus with like orders for Sam in the, in the main episodes and getting through like the story stuff and then anything fun that I like to include. Um, but uh, stuff like that, I think, can be um, my off-screen adventures that that get done, similar to to me building, you know, like 
a zip line and, and stuff like that, and then just delivering lost cargo and doing uh, bits and pieces for for orders, you know? So, like, picking up some lost cargo like this that I can deliver later. It's a... Uh, Oh no, this is a BT area. Great. Alright, hold on. Let's see if I can go around it. Oh, that's that looks so cool. <laughs> sometimes, like, the bike is really hard to control sometimes, and how it slips on surfaces and the braking isn't the best, but I love it when it, like, looks like you've done something really cool, and it was like it was all an accident. Because it was just sliding on the surface. Um, but I do want to, I do want to, like, just say that it's hard when there's a game that's so uh, that has a lot of downtime that's so in depth like this. Um, there we go. Uh, but you don't want to you don't want to spend like a whole episode just going. Okay, guys, today I'm just literally going to run around and do back and forth deliveries. You know what I mean? Um, I do like to include big story events and important things and fun things as well as downtime and doing deliveries here and there. Like I've really enjoyed doing segments with like my own music added in and stuff like that. Because I am trying to like make this a um, like a unique uh, playthrough and a and a apocalypse playthrough, if that makes sense. Like something that like is what I would do, uh, not, you know, just doing what other people have done. Like, I want to make it my own unique approach to this game, and that's why I've added in my own music and tried to edit in stuff, and, like, I really like to showcase, like, the more calming parts of the game. Um, but it is it is really hard to, to structure a Let's Play like this, so I do really appreciate you guys seeing how I've done it over time, and the support has been... Um, has been really, uh, really, really nice, and I and I appreciate that. So I'm trying to make sure that we can get as much as possible and do as much as possible. But I also can recognize the points where I need to kind of uh, do some stuff in my own time um, and uh, catch you up on that later, if that makes sense. So sorry to take you out of the gameplay a little bit for that moment, but I just wanted to let you know that I am trying to really encapsulate um, the Death Stranding experience for the for the most part in these in these episodes. Let's continue. Let's deliver the photograph. We didn't even have to go through the BT area, which is nice. You're from Bridges, right? You don't have anything else for me, do you? No? Okay. Never mind. I can connect you to the network, if that's what you want. Never thought I'd receive a delivery in such excellent condition. You only get the best from me. I certainly don't crash my trike onto the ground and completely ruin it. You never get that from me. <laughs> hey, I have a favor to ask. Do you think you could find my father's camera for me? Ooh. It's kind of a long story, but he used to conduct field research in the area. My father believed that the key to understanding the Death Stranding was hidden here, somewhere in the caves and strata. But he passed away before he could complete his work, leaving me to finish what he started. And not long ago, I found something, something amazing. I was sure it was what my father had been looking for, even if I couldn't see how it related to the Death Stranding myself. What I needed was an expert opinion. Someone who could look at what I'd found and tell me what it meant. So, I grabbed my father's camera and set out to document my discovery. Took pictures of every last detail. But on the way back, I spotted a group of armed men and... I panicked. Dropped everything and ran like hell. Thankfully, they never saw me, but... When I stopped running, I realized the camera was gone. Case and all. I've been trying to pluck up the courage to go and look for it ever since. But then, I remembered that the cargo tag was still on the case. And I figured, you being with bridges and all, that you might have a way to pinpoint its location. Please, I'd give anything to have it back. I'm gonna put in the order. Please understand, that camera means everything to me. Until I know it's safe, I can't think about anything else. 
There's a terminal there you can use if you want to get started right away. Here. It's what I'd take if I were going myself. Knock yourself out. Good work. New order of it. All right, well, we'll pick that up immediately. Uh, retrieval for a camera, and then also giving us some items uh, in the private locker. Here's what I'd take if I had to go myself. Oh no, hang on, we have to pick up the order first and then the stuff. I always forget about this. This is something that I'm always just like, here, here's what I'd take, and then the em private locker's empty, but once you accept the order, then you get some stuff that you can, you can grab, I guess. Let's listen to the briefing. The job is to retrieve a lost camera and deliver it to the photographer's shelter. The client claims she dropped it while attempting to evade a group of armed men, presumed to be terrorists. Fortunately, the camera was in a tagged case, meaning your cargo scanner should lead you right to it. It's possible, however, that the terrorists found it first. If you don't find anything in the area where the case was dropped, you'll have to head to their hideout. Well, it's in mule territory, so I can only assume that's exactly where it's going to be. Here we go. Uh, so here's the stuff that we can take. Um, oh, a riot shotgun. A semi-automatic shotgun that fires rubber buckshot. The shot spreads as it flies, making it easier to hit nearby targets. Dude, riot shotgun. Um, Alright, I'll take some of these. Um, I'll, I'll take some of these. Let's take one non-lethal assault rifle. Uh, I'll take a bowler gun. I mean, we're not going to need these min this many items. I want to test out the riot shotgun, because that does have rubber bullets, so it's not lethal which is good um, and fuck it I'll get those grenades and those grenades place them in the pouches um, armor plate removes our it removes our cargo attached to the suit so I think I'll be fine the bowler gun's fun but we've used that before so we know what that's all about Order assigned. Let me just arrange my cargo in a better way. Um, I might put on... Because I need to come back here anyway. So I'm going to use the private locker to put some shit away. That I can come back here for in a bit. I don't need the floating carrier. I also don't need three climbing anchors, but um, they don't take up much space. So that, oh, that's okay. There you go. That's much better. Carrying much less cargo now. Um, this riot shotgun is going to be fun, I can tell. Okay. Uh, so let's go get this. Let's go get this camera. Okay, we get this camera, so we're going to go to Mule Territory, which is, oh, this is, this should be a nice drive down, this should be okay. I didn't expect this to be too bad. Take that bridge over. Oops. Oh. Yep. Oh. Yep. Yep. Hang on. Like I said, gotta gotta pick this shit up. I miss having my gravity gloves. I might put the gravity gloves back on. The silver hand is really neat. I like that a lot. But uh the, the practical use of the gravity gloves is so much nicer. I'm just going to quickly put these metals on the auto paver. Quickly put that on the auto paver that's just up here. 
This is gonna be this is gonna be great once we build the roads to Mountain Not City. It's gonna be so good. Especially because it's such a such a journey to get there. Contribute some crystals. Put like 250 in for now. He's hoping that we've got other people ready to contribute their stuff to these roads. And we just gotta get some ceramics. Quick in and out of the terrorist camp. We'll be fine. Alright, let's do a scan. There we go. Sam, did you find our missing cargo? Yes, I huh. did. It looks like someone's carrying it around. Oh, I should have got the uh should have got the the weapon that can like pull it out of their hands, that would be cool. Um but riot shotgun, that's what we want, baby. Enemy scanner ping negated. Someone's just carrying around the camera, huh? Oh, there's a truck as well. You're gonna regret this, son. You're gonna regret this. Ooh, look at him go, look at him go. Okay, okay, they're moving out. Graceful. Graceful. God damn it. Come on, mate. Why do you have to go and investigate too? Alright, I'll follow you. I fell for no reason. Damn it. Why did you have to go that back that way? You've made this so difficult for me. Okay, hold on. The designs of the demons are so cool. Come on, down you go. Down you go, mate. Both of you. Come on. Yeah. Right, you're down. I was going to go loud with the shotgun, but now I'm just like, now I could have a bit of fun being stealthy. <coughs> Quick, where's my cardboard box? Oh, they're checking the bike. What the fuck? Oh, what the fuck? Vehicles destroyed by a considerate BT. Vehicle destroyed by a considerate BT. What does that mean? Why was it being considerate? Destroyed my way out of here. Was it being as in like considerate to like, you know, get through the demons off my scent? <laughs> what the fuck? I've never, what? Oh man, I kind of wanted to use the the shotgun. All right, we've got the we've got the cargo. Let's let's have some fun here. I wanna, cause I wanna, I wanna use the shotgun. I wanna see what this is all about. Dun 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 dun. Get off of that! Get off of that! Oh, you're on a turret too. Come on. <laughs> in the ass! Get shot in the ass! You picked the wrong day to mess with me, baby. For fuck's sake. I don't have a BB to land on, so it's fine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> please! Alright, fucking. I wanted to. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, there's multiple mule trucks. What the hell's going on? Does this turret fire lethal bullets? Or is it uh, non-lethal? This looks- this sounds lethal to me. Oh, my fucking PlayStation just crashed. My PlayStation just crashed. Um, the game didn't crash. My PlayStation is just- is off. That sucks. I was in the middle of having such fun. Alright, let me just restart my game. Well, of course my my storage wasn't uh, removed properly because my PlayStation died. <laughs> was It wasn't turned off properly, guys. Would you believe it? Would you believe me that my PlayStation wasn't turned off properly? Do you guys think that my PS5 was turned off and destroyed by a considerate BT as well? <laughs> They're like, here, first we go for your vehicle. And then second, you're, you're clearly just making a fool of yourself fighting against these demons instead of getting the camera and running away. <laughs> so, we'll just turn off your PlayStation instead. Uh, this is so disappointing! Because I've, I've just gotten my bike and just gone for a drive, and... Um, I'm still carrying all of my... Uh, I'm still carrying all of my stuff <laughs> from before I put things in the locker. But it's okay. We'll be on. We'll be on the bike. Sam, did you find our missing cargo? Huh? It looks like someone's carrying it around. Looks like it's being carried around, huh? All these mules can go and check this out again. Dude's rushing to go and investigate. Dude with the camera's taking it easy. Are you gonna have a graceful fall here, or can I slowly zip down? <sighs> Lovely. This is awkward. Okay, I'll just follow you. Just both walk on this one together. <laughs> there we go. Camera recovered. Now, problem. I need my bike. Cool, it's not getting eaten by a BT. That's nice. Here we go. This is the this is the the better the better playthrough because I I get to keep my <laughs> I get to keep my bike this time. Camera retrieved. Great job. If only we could do full front flips or back flips on the bike, it'd be great. Well, this music is probably not going to play for long, is it? Because it's going to play, and then we're just going to ride right around the corner and uh, and get to the get to the photographer's place, Saint Eric's Plan by Lou Raw as well. So it's very interesting how sometimes the music works in this game that it'll it'll play like it'll have such a long period of time where it just won't play any music at all for you. 
Um, and then when you're doing a mission, like, go do this for the Mountaineer and then go and return a photograph. They're like, yes, this is the perfect time to play this music when you have a quick little, you know, a drive or a hike over instead of like something that's like a much longer journey where it plays a couple of songs or maybe like a longer one. So it's very peculiar sometimes, the uh, the choices. Sometimes, obviously, uh, we are doing... Uh, songs much faster like when we just are zooming through on the bike but in a moment like that like the the mule camp is not far away from the terminal um, and I just think that there there are have been other situations where I think that music would have been cool to fit in and it's just there just isn't uh, isn't anything going on <laughs> but there you go let's deliver the camera looks like a digital camera I was wondering if it was going to be a digital one or a film camera but it looks like a digital one afraid I'd never see it again. Oh, thank God. It looks uh, exactly like it always did. Oh, you don't know what this means to me. Wonderful. St. Eric's plan. We got the music, baby. Oh, the mother. It was my father's idea to move all the way out here. He thought he could get to the bottom of the Death Stranding all by himself. And we were right behind him. But look where it got us. If you hadn't come along when you did, the camera would be gone, and all our hard work would have been lost before anyone had a chance to see it. We can't let that happen. The world needs to hear about this. Someone out there will know what it means. So, connect us up. We want to be a part of the UCA. <clears throat> Done. Say less. Get connected. I wonder if we'll get BB back now. Or whether we need to connect with another prepper. We'll have to see. We'll see. Wow. Oh, there's a f there's, there's some uh, I don't know there's some empty regions in there. Photographer has joined the UCA. Oh, there you go. Then we've got the data for the shotgun. New interview data required. Cave paintings and stencils and proper interview for the photographer. Uh, we do have another interview and another email to meet read actually. So it's probably a good opportunity to to do that and get that done. I truly hope our work will help to make a difference. Thanks again. I hope we get to meet again before too long. Sam, it's Hartman. That camera you recovered contains some fascinating footage. The data stored on it was automatically shared with us after you added the photographer's shelter to the network, along with her father's research materials. Anyway, my lab still doesn't have a high-speed chiral connection, but I was able to check one of the images against a database at HQ. Based on my preliminary calculations and the photographic and documentary evidence in our archives, I would estimate the paintings to be in the region of 30,000 years old, if not older. Cool. The artists were likely Neanderthals or other precursors who were migrating across the continent. See the dolphin-like creatures there? At the time, the cave would have been situated even farther from the coast than it is now. So how could the artist possibly have encountered dolphins? Answer, they couldn't. It is my belief that they had a brush not with dolphins, but with beach things. And that would mean the Death Stranding is not the first phenomenon of its kind, that it has happened before. Since the birth of our planet, countless species have gone extinct, from bacteria to dinosaurs. Scientists refer to the largest known mass extinctions as the Big Five. But there have, of course, been many other extinction events, albeit on a smaller scale. What if the artists were trying to document one such event, that of their own extinction? It would be the first record in Earth's history of a death stranding. And it would also lend credence to my theories. 
The sooner you come and connect me to the network, the sooner we'll know. Just imagine the mysteries we'll be able to solve. I'll be waiting, Sam. Ooh, okay. Wonderful news, Sam. <laughs> BB-28's vitals are nearly within optimal operating parameters. Just before I called, it opened its eyes. It was looking all over, as if searching for someone. And then, our eyes met. For a moment, I think. I tell you, it was almost enough to make me want to keep the kid for myself. Anyway, I still need to run diagnostics and make adjustments as needed. However, the fluctuating local chiral levels could pose a problem. Think you can bring one more site into the network? Once you have, and once I have subsequently confirmed that DB is functioning reliably, I'll release it into your custody. This is the last step. I promise. Just one more site. That's all we should need. Good luck. Right, time to connect Hartman's lab, and we've we've been to uh, we've been to Hartman's Sam, lab already. I see you received a mail from our mountaineer friend. Seems he's got an order for you. Might be good to give it a look. Uh, we have been we went to Hartman's lab in a previous episode and uh, discovered it, so we can go on a journey uh, to actually get there properly and connect him into the network, which will be which will be nice. But the mountaineer also wants us to do something for him so um we've got some mail from the roboticist and also the mountaineer so let's have a look uh are humans all that important couldn't stay away huh glutton for punishment i reckon then let me bore you a little more i told you before about drone syndrome and delivery dependence right Turns out there's an interesting little theory both might be reactions to against might be a better way of putting it the possibility of the singularity Humans didn't want to stop being human, and the Death Stranding, that was mankind's last ditch attempt to retain its sense of self. We caused it somehow because we couldn't bear the thought of losing our identity. Makes a sort of sense, no? Humans have beaches, humans become BTs, humans cause void outs, it all comes back to us. We die, sure, but at least we die with a bang, not a whimper. Maybe our next step should be to try and make the singularity happen for real. Get rid of us once and for all, I mean I actually think that way. You know I don't, but sometimes I can almost see the logic in it. What's the measure of man? What's the value in fighting tooth and nail to keep him around? Is it ever too much? Can't help wondering. I tell you, I'd hate to die and come back as a BT and stir up trouble. Better to be rid of the flesh, don't you think, Sam? I mean, that's a that's a deep thing to get into. Uh, let's have a look at the mountaineer. Me and the wife are good, but need a little something. My wife is doing great now and it's all thanks to you. You couldn't have demonstrated more clearly the type of support the UCA has to offer. I don't know much about the chiral network, but I know we're a part of it now and that things are better that way. Oh, I have a friend nearby I'd like you to deliver something to. Could you drop by when you have the time? I'd appreciate it. Okay, so then he wants us to go to him specifically to deliver something. So we will check that out before we go and connect Hartman's lab. I think that could be in our best interest. Uh, we do have some interviews to read, so let's have a look. Cave paintings and stencils by Hartman one year ago. Hartman's lab. Cave paintings provide an invaluable window into the lives of our ancestors, how they lived, what they experienced. Some have been preserved here on our continent, although most have sadly been lost in void outs. The oldest cave paintings are all believed to date back 64,800 years or more, but all of these are, or perhaps were, in Europe. What's become of them, I wonder? Have they too been obliterated in annihilation events? If not, are the caves containing them now infested with BTs? Does Europe still exist, even? One cannot help but worry that these vital records have been forever lost to us, but I digress. These first paintings were likely made by the Neanderthals. They were crude depictions of creatures such as deer, bison, and horses, interspersed with stenciled outlines of large hands. Some assert these are the signatures of primeval painters, but could they also not be depictions of BT handprints? Could our ancient relatives have been trying to tell us something or issue a warning, or is it perhaps one flight of fancy too far? It's very interesting that we're uh, that we're being presented with the fact that this might not be the first time we've ever experienced the Death Stranding uh, on you know in in history, which is uh, very very interesting. Uh, as there's to say, hey, there's been extinction events before. What's to say this is the first Death Stranding? You know what I mean? All right, we've got two prepper interviews. So the photographer and the mountaineer. We got the mountaineer one last episode, so we're just reading that one now. One year ago, 
It wasn't that long ago that we moved to this shelter, the three of us. Before that, we used to live in the city, until my husband up and said we had to leave. He was so insistent, and I didn't have any choice but to go along with it. I couldn't take care of our daughter by myself. He said he was sick of city life, and I can't say I don't understand at all. I mean, time for may not have been an issue or BTs, but I can see how safe and comfortable life might uh, become. How a safe and comfortable life might become suffocating. Our daughter might be happy and healthy, but we're the exception. Hardly anyone even having children these days. You don't need a crystal wall to see where the world's headed. My husband says we're bound for extinction. Says nobody's doing anything about it. People would rather stick their heads in the sand and try to wait out the storm. If we don't figure out the Death Stranding and fix this world of ours, that's all she wrote. My husband says that a lot. That maybe he's just a guy with a camera, but at least he's doing something, and so on. He's out again somewhere, investigating something. Recently, he started taking our daughter with him, teaching her to take photos of rocks and murals and the like. I'm glad they're spending time together, and, uh, and I know it's good for our education, but I still hate it when they go out and leave me here to wait and pray that they come home safe and sound. Prepper interview. The Mountaineer. Husband. People aren't meant to stay cooped up inside or live in one place forever. It's not natural. Exploration's in our DNA. The great outdoors is where we're supposed to be. You know how ancestors started out in Africa, right? Well, they didn't just stay there, did they? They wanted to try and find a better life, a better home. That's why humanity spread all across the planet. And as we've traveled, we've evolved. Little by little, we've grown tougher and smarter. Even our immune systems have become stronger. But if we stop moving, stop exploring, all that, that all stops too. We, we stagnate as a species, maybe even regress. That's why we can't hole up in the cities. There's a whole universe beyond those chiral clouds that I'd love to explore someday. But if that's not possible, then I want to at least get as close as I can. Climb the bigger mountains, go as high as I can go, and try to see what lies beyond. And I want to do it with the love of my life, the world-class mountaineer who showed me the beauty of this place. My guiding star. Together, there's no peak we can't summit. Romantic. So romantic. Okay, so we're going to go up to the mountaineer to do a job specifically for him. But let me have some bots pick up and deliver some orders while we're here. Um, I don't think... Uh, I don't need anything in there. I'm going to recycle some stuff, though, that I don't need. That's good. Get rid of some stuff. Offload my equipment. Uh, we're going to head up to... We're going to head up to the... Mountaineer now and do his job for him. Because Dead Man is insistent. And then, after that, from there... Uh, we can then go and link up Hartman's lab, and then we'll be reunited with BB, which is which is very exciting. And then uh, it's going to be uh, that's going to be so nice for me to actually detect BTs once again. All right, Mountaineer. Sam Bridges, there's someone we need you to deliver a package to. She's a strange bird that lives even higher up in the clouds than we do, and the research she's doing, well, it's out there. And and then some. And we're talking straight up occult stuff, though she wouldn't be very happy hearing me say so. And she claims she's delving into the mysteries of the cosmos. Anyway, I found this rock out in the mountains with a handprint on it. And when I mentioned it to her, she got all excited. I honestly don't know what kind of close encounter she thinks it signifies. But I was wondering if you could bring it to her for me. And joining the UCA has opened my eyes to a few things. Like how there are all these people out there trying to make sense of the Death Stranding in their own way. And sure, her ideas may sound like the ravings of a lunatic to me, but they clearly mean something to her, and I'd like to help her out. With your assistance, that is. You'll find an official order on the terminal. Interesting. We're getting into like the the cosmic side of things, which I'm, which I find really exciting. Stone fragment delivery to the spiritualist. To review, the mountaineers asked you to deliver a rock with a handprint on it to a woman known as the spiritualist. If you could bring her shelter into the network while you're there, it'd be enough to expand our coverage over the entire area. It would also facilitate BB's recovery, according to Deadman. Let's take it. 
This order involves a heavy cargo load. It's alright, I'll put on my power skeleton. Uh, fabricate a power skeleton, please. What's the support skeleton again? That, um... Cargo capacity is increased. This reduces the cargo burden by bearing some of the weight. Yeah, we're gonna go for it. We'll do power skeleton. We want power skeleton. Stone fragment. God, massive boxes too. Alright, <laughs> I might, I'll, I'll probably offload a couple of things though. We won't take everything, so I'll come back to this place. Uh, speed skeleton, we'll put it in the private locker, climbing anchor. Private locker. Put this fresh water in the private locker. Medical instrument. Private locker. Cool. Head out. Ooh, what? What is this? Ah, oh, it's the codec. Sam, it's just like the one at South Knot City. A vortex loaded with so much chiralium that it's almost off the charts. Slowly but surely, it's creeping closer to us here in Mountain Knot. At least that's what I think, but I can't see it. Not with the naked eye. But the data doesn't lie. It's the same temporal phenomenon that you told me dropped you in a war zone. I told you. But that wasn't. The Cupid's limiter can handle most chiral spikes, but we didn't plan for another supercell. Another supercell? I told you it was the same as before. Mama, is that you? You got me, Sam. It's been a while. But not really. Mulligan, Lochna, we're the same. One body, one mind, one being. There's no point in trying to draw a distinction. Not in this world. We're all connected. Remember that. Yeah, that's that's what I was like when when she was talking as if like that stuff. I'm like, well, I, we saw them merge together, so we definitely have an understanding of that. Um, interesting. This is like the email popped up to do this thing for the mountaineer is definitely like not our main mission to do because we need to focus on linking up Hartman's lab as well. But the fact that we could potentially be moving ourselves into a a war zone again says a lot. So we could potentially be going back into that chiral storm uh, after we end up connecting uh, this spiritualist to the network. We'll have to we'll have to see. Let's ride this zipline. Da, da, da. Let's ride the zipline. Let's not punch the zipline, but let's ride it instead. <laughs> Up this way. Because this is where we're going. I'll, I'm very appreciative of this zipline. There's a whole bunch of lost cargo there, too. Okay. Oh. How dare whoever built one of these zip lines or two of them, whichever one was here first, for them to not build it literally one meter just over to get to that one is I, just like it's so funny to me. It's so funny to me. But it's all right. We'll make our we're making our journey up. So we need to get up there. We do have. Hmm. We don't have a ladder. Maybe I needed maybe I needed the all-terrain legs instead. Because this is gonna be a bit of a journey. That one zip line would have been almost a perfect uh, perfect jump. But we will do it as the game has intended and we will go on go through the goddamn blizzard. shifting that weight left it's on like the last thing it won't it won't stabilize it's so funny at 
least the scan can uh, can help us see, which is pretty cool. How it like will highlight the uh, the terrain for a little bit for us. So we're doing this. We're doing this spiritualist first. We'll deliver this order. See what she's all about. Connect it to the network, and then this actually does would probably qualify as one more uh, one more establishment to hook up to the network. But we will see. And then after that, we will finally get to go to Hartman's lab properly and meet him. I guess. Uh, it really is a silly idea of me not to bring a, a ladder for this hike, but we'll see what we can uh, we'll see what we can climb on to to get up there. I think we should be okay. Oh, you climbed up there and then decided that you didn't actually want to climb up there, did you? That's fine. How far away are we? 300 meters. Doing great, Sam. Yeah, this doesn't look like too steep. Of a hike, so I think this will be okay. Because it looks like we'll be going up and then we'll be going down again. I used a road that I rebuilt. Love it. Oh, this is a bit steep, this one. Watch out for the whiteout. Mail received from the mountaineer now. Come on, climb up on the rocks. You got this. Come on, Sim. I know you can do this. Sim, I, I believe in you. Okay? I believe in you. Stock up our energy levels. Let's climb up this goddamn rock. You can do it. See? Once we get to the safety of the shelter, we'll read that mail that we've received. So it'll be whatever he's referencing in the whiteout. It's too late. We're already in the middle of it, dude. <laughs> question of, uh, oh actually no, it's not, oh this is bad, <laughs> it's not going down at all, it's uh, going, it's going down and then up again, oh, shit, okay, I need to be careful here, I don't know what type of terrain we're getting into so just be careful, I'm gonna make it up again. Getting up again is going to be the problem. You got this scene. Don't fall down. stretch. See, don't you think that this is, this is like one of those moments that I'll highlight is uh, going off this way into the blizzard on your pathway to the spiritualist. Don't you think this would be a pretty nice opportunity for them to go, all right, let's put a song here, you know, let's do something like hopeless 
um, and isolating. Oh no, uh, let's do something uh, hopeless and isolating, you know? of the music choice. Quickly refresh our cargo because that did a lot of damage, but we made it. Oh yeah. Made it through the other side. For the spiritualist. Um, let's climb up and over. It's probably a better path. Uh, there you go. Weapons detected. Nice. Alright, let's have a read of this mail that we got. So the Mountaineer. Let's just read that first, because it seems to be the most relevant. Watch out for the whiteout. <laughs> uh, hey Sam, I hope this gets through to you. The weather took a turn for the worst a little while ago, and now it's gone full whiteout. Zero visibility up here on the mountain. I hope you weren't caught in it as well. <laughs> if it's not too late, it's just keeping an eye on the weather forecast and steering clear. Limited visibility is not the only issue with whiteouts. You know, you lose spatial awareness and can't gauge distances. Hell, sometimes you literally can't tell up from down. Scary stuff. With your gear, though, you shouldn't be completely helpless. You can use your map to plot a route to a destination. This will show up whenever you use the Odradex cargo scanner to ping your surroundings, even if you literally can't see them. If you lose your way, try switching to compass mode to confirm your destination. That way you can at least orient yourself in the direction you need to go. Above all else, don't panic. It's easy to lose your, your head in a whiteout, but if you can stay calm, you'll be absolutely fine. Good luck, Sam. We were absolutely fine, so that's fine. <laughs> Dad would be proud. Dear Sam, I was right about the camera. I'm told the pictures I took were incredible. You see, the paintings of whales and dolphins I discovered in those caves might have been painted by Neanderthals. I don't really understand the significance of it all, but it's definitely what my father was looking for. I don't think I've ever been so happy in my entire life, and it's all because of you. Dad would be happy too, I'm sure of it. Thank you so, so, so much. I know I nearly gave my mum a heart attack, but this proves it was worth it in my end, right? I made a difference once, and I can do it again. There may be other secrets of the Death Stranding hidden nearby. I'll be more careful this time, but I have to get back out there and find them. I'll be in touch when I do. And then the Doctor. Connections keep us alive. The medical terminal and bioprinter appear to be functioning as intended. The Mountaineer's wife should now be able to receive the treatment she needs, thank goodness. Did you know that it was my better half who designed both these devices? The medical terminal uses hologram technology, and the bioprinter was built upon existing chiral printer tech. The difference, of course, being that this model can be used to synthesize medicines and organic compounds. My partner used to enjoy life in the city. She worked as a researcher there. But when I proposed moving out here to provide medical care for preppers, she was happy to follow me. How fortunate for us all, as preppers cannot survive in complete isolation, and neither can I. There's not much of a point in being a medical professional if you've no one to tend to. Indeed, we need to forge and maintain connections of all kinds, and that's just what you're helping us do. With your deliveries and by expanding the chiral network, make no mistake, the bonds between us make us stronger. But you already knew that, didn't you? We did indeed. Now let's uh, connect, let's forge another connection with the spiritualist. As I'm covered in, covered in snow. Here's your stone fragments. I thought it was just going to be one fancy rock with a handprint on it. Meanwhile, we've got giant cargo crates of stones to deliver. <laughs> Sam Bridges, I've been expecting you. The Mountaineer told me all about you. This handprint you brought me, or stencil as I prefer to call it, is a vital clue. It hails from an era long before the dawn of human history. I'm going to date it, and lay bare the cause of the Death Stranding. And when I do, all the secrets of the cosmos shall be revealed. <laughs> Did you know this mountain used to be a pyramid in ancient times? <laughs> it's true. You won't find a place closer to the beach than this. To the wellspring, a source of untold power. How else do you think that chiral network of yours works? But I digress. Show me the stencil. Is there actually a pyramid that I could find if I like find like a how it's to? Or is it underneath the mountain or inside the mountain? 
Interesting. Are you just bullshitting me? <laughs> this this uh, this spiritualist looks exactly like the cosplayer. <laughs> like, it's like exactly the same. I'm wondering if it's a similar character model. Me to the chiral network. Will do. Don't have to ask me twice. Look at me, I'm a bit chilly. You, you got hot water up here? Can I have a shower? <laughs> I think I've got frostbite. My nose kind of fell off earlier, I think. I can no longer smell. Uh, touch is gone. My eyeballs are frosted over. I'll never see again. <laughs> How have I not died? <laughs> Honestly. There is still another region there that's uh, that's not connected right next door. That's literally the cosplayer. Prepper interview, the spiritualist. Nice. Now I have everything I need to date the stencil. Once I have my results, I'll share them with you and your colleagues at Bridges. You've done a good thing, Sam. If you find anything else, be sure to bring it straight to me. I'll be waiting. You should take this. I'm certain that it will be of use to you in your journey. The sheer amount of preppers that I have to, uh, oh nice. The sheer amount of preppers that I have to connect and get five stars with right now. Is that to, uh, that to replace my, uh, yeah, a love knot backpack accessory. Until we meet again, my friend. Sam, it worked. BB-28 is in excellent condition. No evidence of lingering attachments or homesickness either. Perhaps its memory was erased after all. I'm sad about that. All that remains is for you to hook it up and take it for a run. I was hoping to return it to you as soon as possible, but... Uh, I don't want to. I mean, I do. But it's a little more complicated than that. What? We've got a problem. You may have heard about the massive supercell heading right for Mountain Knot City. I left my facility to perform some additional tests on the BB in the field, and now I find myself unable to return. You know the cabin on the mountainside, northeast of Mountain Knot? Let's meet there. Good work. New order available. So he's, he's got BB with him out in the field? He wants us to meet him there. Oh, it's so close by. We're going to do Hartman's first. We'll connect up to Hartman's lab before we go here because there is an online safe house that I could come back to if I want. Um, ooh, it sounds a bit stormy out there. All right, now look at the spirit. I wonder if they're going to pull some random crap uh, that they did with... Um, with other people when they're like, like Mama and Lochner, we're twins. So if we look at the spiritualist, um, I'm gonna move myself away from the from the structure. Thank you for the <laughs> There it is. We can see it. Holy shit, dude! The storm is is basically right where he wants us to go. He wants us to go into the eye of the storm. Holy crap. Um, like, let's check the weather. Mate. It's permanent. <laughs> That's pretty much permanent time fall right there. Okay, now, if we have a look at the spiritualist, right? That's what the spiritualist face looks like. And then we're going to go over here. We're going to look at the cosplayer. It is the same character model. It's the same. I bet we're going to do this thing where we get some story out of them later. It's like, oh yeah, my twin sister's a cosplayer. Actually, hang on a minute. Um, email from cosplayer. Hold on a minute. Ah, 
oh my god, it is. Yes, no, look, there you go. Um, I've got a twin sister. Maybe you've met her. She's a prepper too, but she doesn't do cosplay. She's more interested in spiritual stuff, you know, mystical mumbo jumbo. They literally are twins. It's in the emails. There you go. As soon as I was saying it out loud, I was like, you know what? I think I remember reading an email about this. Yes, the cosplayer did tell us about their twin sister, which is a spiritual person. They're like, ah, we got to use the same character model. How, what do we do? Ah, yes, we just tell them that they're twins. That's how we get away with it, by just putting twins everywhere. <laughs> there we go. All right, prepper interview, the spiritualist. No one has been able to explain the Death Stranding, and I doubt that anyone ever will. Certainly not with science. Science is only suitable for observation, measurement, objectivity. You can observe and measure as much as you like, but it will bring you no closer to an understanding. Sometimes you need to expand your mind and open your heart. Seek the souls of the dead. Listen for the waves on the beach. In antiquity, there were no barriers between the, the realms. People moved freely between the earth, out of space. And the world of the dead. What are myths and legends, if not records, of these journeys? My research has only confirmed this. The pyramids of, uh, of Egypt and Mesoamerica, the Nazcan Lines, Stonehenge, all gateways built by humans in order to access the beach. Surely you can see that the wisdom of the ancients has never been more relevant. The people of Bridges would do well to remember that. Interesting. Okay, um, there is another order to pick up. Let's have a look and see what it is. Uh, orders for Sam. Oh God, more, more Vog preserved fuel. That is 168 kilograms. We might just leave that for another day. Um, we are going to make our way to Hartman's lab before we literally head into a massive storm. Um, we do have a zip line that we can take, which is which is nice. I might, if I can, just build a zip line of my own right here. Why has someone put a ladder just <laughs> just poking up in the air? Um, another structure nearby. Oh, come on, you can, you can do it. I believe in you. I'm going to build a zip line here. Man, that is insane over there. So could we see that? I don't, I don't know if we could see, have seen that one before, because it, it definitely wasn't as loud or as obvious when um, they were talking about the first storm. But that's crazy. And I'm pretty sure... Oh, no, hang on. There you go. So... Yeah, fucking dead man is almost like right underneath that so that's going to be our big next story moment uh which was going to happen when we connected one more facility to that network which we have wow guess we go this way Going back to the mountaineer. Oh, the mountaineer is uh, is there. There's the mountaineer. That's the zip line that I need. We're going too far away. <laughs> Take me back. All right, and then I should just be able to from here. Then go to that one. Bada bing, bada boom. Back at the mountaineer. And then go to Hartman's lab. Actually, no, I don't even need to be at this one. My trike is, uh. My trike was down there. For some reason, I was just like, yes, I need to go back to the mountaineer. I don't need to be here at all. We can, uh, we can just head down the hill. Let's 
get this track and we'll get out of here. Goddamn freezing. Gonna need a warm shower. Ooh, Hartman does have a spa. So there you go. Hartman does have a spa, so that's gonna be nice. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck in my bike. <laughs> Shit. I didn't mean to do such a hard time. Shot and just exploded on me. Dude, I'm on fire. <laughs> my arm is broken. Oh my god. Oh well. Um <laughs> Good thing there was another bike up here. Alright, that's the second trike ruined in one episode. That's very good. I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, let's try let's try not to ruin um Let's try not to ruin this one that's right up here, shall we? Another one. Wonderful. Here's one I prepared earlier, just in case I wrecked my old one, clearly. Just had this, uh, had this waiting in the wings. Okay. Let's head to Hartman's lab, hopefully without uh, any any hiccups along the way. And uh, we'll connect him up and then we'll head, I guess, right into the eye of the storm so we can be reunited with our, our BB. I was hoping... I was hoping we'd get our BB um, in a relatively smooth manner, but it doesn't seem as if that's going to be the case whatsoever. I also oh, I need to figure out the best way to get to him in the first place. But let's get to it. Interestingly enough, it seems that the Eye of the Storm is actually more so uh, closer to Hartman's lab than anything else. We're like kind of right underneath it, which is, uh, which is very interesting. And I wonder if this has anything to do with uh, the fact that we are connecting the network, you know? And I wonder if it has anything to do with the fact that uh, Lochner was talking about how the code that she wrote for the, uh, for the uh, Cupid is, uh, has been altered, is slightly different. It's very concerning, uh, but we do have the limiter uh, at the very least, that has been installed. So maybe Lochner has uh, done something that might offset things, but we're definitely there's definitely more to there's definitely more to this. You know what I mean? There's definitely more to this. Uh, we're at Hartman's lab. Um, we don't have any cargo or a delivery for him, but. Um, uh, because we're not delivering an order, is that why we're not able to talk to him? Because there's a private locker, it's empty, we can't, there's, there's nothing here, there's no orders, there's no cargo that could be delivered. Bud, how do we, how do we communicate with Hartman? Because there wasn't, there wasn't even any lost cargo for him or anything that I could bring to him. It makes me, uh, makes me very curious uh, that maybe, maybe we aren't supposed to come here and connect him to the network yet, which doesn't make sense. Because I'm pretty sure we are supposed to. I can sit at the heartwarming spa once again and bathe. It's not easy to come to this place, man. <laughs> it's not easy to get to Hartman's lab. Um, hmm. I don't know. There's no cargo or order or anything to give to him, but I'm getting my stamina refreshed. I'm also refreshing my canteen, which is nice. Uh, I guess uh, in that in that way, I can just go straight to. Um, I, I guess I can go straight to Dead Man, um, where he's asked us to, to meet him, but what's very confusing is the is the lack of um, the lack of communication with Hartman. Unless, like it seems that to to make things happen 
at the terminal, you need to deliver something. If you don't have anything to deliver, you can't just communicate with them. There's a memory chip here, so I can at least find and deliver a memory chip. Um, but even then, that's still not cargo. So I don't know if that will, I don't know if that will count. I'll try and get this, try and get this memory shard, which is all the way up there. And see if that, um, see if that can do anything. But delivering, delivering a memory shard is, is much different, so... So I can't even fabricate anything at Hartman's place, so I can't even get a ladder if I want, or anything like that. My battery is not doing so well. Oh. <laughs> I can't, um... make anything. Can't make some all-terrain pants, which would be nice for this. Or some ladders to help me get up to this point. There is a rope, but that is all the way up there. I don't even think that's going to be relevant. I'm hoping that if I get this chip, it might be able to trigger something, but the thing is with the memory chip data, you just have the person that it relates to pop in and say, thanks Sam, you're a legend. I thought a cutscene, I thought a cutscene would start, you know? Because this is just bot deliveries. I thought a cutscene um, would start or something once we got to Hartman's place, but nothing. So well, I'll, have to, I'll have to poke around a bit to see if I can maybe find something or at the very least um, insert this memory chip and uh, see what happens. So the memory chip data cannot be shared at Hartman's lab either. You can't, you just can't do anything there. So we're back here instead. We're at Mountain Knot City where we have to look at that massive chiral storm. But yeah, so I've given up at Hartman's lab, I guess. We'll, we'll connect it eventually uh, one of these days, but um... But yeah, it's just it's just not happening. So I guess what's on the agenda is we literally just have to go and meet. Um, we have to go and meet Dead Man. So I'm sure that we'll do something with Hartman's lab eventually. But the way that he was communicating to me made me thought that we would be like, okay, let's go see Hartman then. I guess we'll do that later. So, what's on the memory chip? It's fragile. How did you get this? I don't know what to say, except thanks. Oh, let's see. What you got for me? The f a frozen soap bubble. So we've got soap bubble, snowflake, and then frozen soap bubble, because they couldn't figure out anything else. <laughs> They couldn't figure out anything else. Uh, so we'll have a look at that, and then we'll also have a look at some mail that we've received, as well as an interview, because I delivered some lost cargo to the doctor uh, before, and that unlocked an interview with him. Frozen soap bubble. Processes such as cryostasis and cryopreservation, which aim to prolong life and slow decomposition through the lowering of temperature, can in some ways be seen as a form of time travel, though of course they do not compare to the chiralium-based process, which stop time altogether. Freezing the fragile beauty of a soap bubble causes it to crystallize without popping, forming a naturally forming a perfect little work of art. But because it is merely frozen, time does not stop for the bubble altogether. One day it will thaw, and if not handled with utmost care, it will be destroyed. Another tale fit to make a porter cry. Uh, interviews. So it's another prepper interview with the doctor. I know what you're thinking. Why is this prepper claiming to be a doctor? Don't worry, you're not the first. Rest assured that I am re I really am a doctor. I even have a medical license uh, through the governing body that issued it to me is long gone, uh, so I won't be offended that it counts for little. But license or no, people still need doctors. Preppers get sick too, you know. That's not so hard for you to get your head around, is it? 
Most folks hold themselves to a city hospital when there's something wrong, but out in the boonies that's not really an option. But we can't just leave those people out to die. You know full well what would follow, and so I do what I can to help. Around here, I'm the only one people can rely on to keep them alive. Whenever I'm needed, I try to find someone to transport me to a patient's residence, but that's hardly the most efficient approach, and it doesn't endear me to the porters either. I've heard that Bridges is trying to bring everyone into their chiral network. If it's as good as I've heard, it would be a real game changer. I could perform all sorts of diagnosis and even some treatments without having to leave my shelter. I hope you manage to extend it here soon. There's a lot of people out here counting on us both. Cool. Uh, and then let's have a look at the mail we got from the Mountaineer of we had a boy and do you have power gloves? Big news Sam, we just welcomed a new life into the world, a baby boy. Both him and the missus are doing fine. In fact, they're sleeping peacefully next to me as I write this message. I know you're a busy man though, so I won't go on and about us. Uh, besides, there's something else I've been meaning to tell you. I don't want to be presumptuous, and I know you're the best porter there is, but even you must have found it tough making deliveries up in these snowy mountains, right? Well, have you tried using power gloves? They could be a real game changer, let me tell you. If you lose your footing and start to slip, these gloves will help you catch, uh, help you catch yourself right before you slide right off a cliff. They make decent weapons too if things get hairy. Just bear in mind they drain your battery, so be sure to keep an eye on that. And hey, don't tell me you've never wanted to rock a set of metal claws like an action hero, Sam. Wolverine, baby. You know, I've got a feeling you're going to be a real role model for my boy when he's older. Of course, it's all down to us, myself included, to make the world a better place for him and future generations. I know you feel the same. Uh, let's not let them down, Sam. Cool. No worries. Okay. It is time for me to go and see Dead Man. I'm trying to think of the best way to do it. I think we could potentially take this zip line maybe there. We've got to zip line it in some capacity and then climb up here to get to him. So I'm going to rest in the private room to recharge my battery. Um, but I'm also thinking instead of the speed skeleton. Uh, I'll fabricate myself the power gloves. We'll actually use them for the first time. I switched back to gravity gloves. But the power gloves would be good, as well as the all-terrain skeleton. Um, I guess we should go for a level 2. Because we only have level 1 of the power stuff and the speed stuff. Because I'm assuming they're tied to other people that we need to level up in the central region, like the junk dealer and chiral artist and all of that kind of stuff. And the engineer as well, we need to go back to him. He's probably the one that will give us that stuff. But the roboticist, because we've um, hung out with her a bit more, she's given us uh, the level two, the all-terrain skeleton. So we'll build one of those, because that's our best skeleton at this point. And we'll put on the power gloves, so that should be nice and easy. We'll place that in the private locker, and we'll keep the gravity gloves with us. Um, but we'll also fabricate, I should probably fabricate uh, a couple of ladders um, for my hiking. And I'll keep a second PCC on me as well. One climbing rope will probably do the trick for me. Wonderful. Get some more stuff. Great. Alright, I am ready for my journey. Let's go for it. Just taking a very smooth ride up the mountainside here as we get to Dead Man. Oh. Nope. Oh. God. Yep. I guess Sam, it'll be fine. Just another supercell. Nothing to worry about. We'll probably just get transported literally back to World War One again. No biggie. There's, there's the place. This turned out to be a much smoother, um, a much smoother trip than I anticipated as well. And there was a, there was a truck waiting for me so I didn't really need to do as much hiking as I thought as compared to the spiritualist because I didn't think I'd I didn't think I'd need um, a truck I thought it would have um, I thought it would have been a bit more steep and I wouldn't have been able to go very far but alas we're actually getting caught in this storm with Fucking dead man. Oh 
my god. Oh, he just got teleported. He's got my BB. He's got my BB! And he's just been taken into the storm. Oh my god. Dude, what the fuck? This is so bizarre. Eyes closed. That's my boy. <sighs> One eye open. This is such a, a visual and trippy experience. The this like all all of the different like themes and, and visuals and everything is just so inherently confusing and weird. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> That's really, um, that's a really simplistic way of describing it. I'm aware just to go, well, that's really fucking deep and interesting, but it is. Look how good the lighting is on these dudes. Hello. Coming for BB. <laughs> Episode seven, Clifford. Just two legends staring at each other. What the fuck? What an intense stare Mads Mikkelsen has. Great, we're in the middle of an air raid. <laughs> oh, my codec works. Sam! Sam! Dead man. Oh, thank God I got through. Where are you? No idea. 
I'm seeing tanks and soldiers. The uniforms date back over a century. World War II era, I suspect. Uh, did you see the man leading the soldiers? No. I think it's the guy you told us about. The born and bred warrior asshole who's gunning for BB. He must be our ticket home, right? Don't ask me. This is only my second time. And without BB, he'll be hard to find. Lucky for you, I've got BB here in tip-top shape, just waiting for you. Where should we meet? Is there anything unusual or distinct near you? I'm in the sewers. Hang on. I can see a tower through a hole. A, a square tower, right above my position. Gotcha. I'll find it and search for a sewer entrance. Can you sit tight for now? Gladly. I won't move an inch. Yeah, well, if I'm slow, you might have to. What? That warrior asshole. He wasn't after me. He was after BB. Oh, fuck me. Right. If he's looking for anyone, it's you. Oh, no. Hurry the hell up, Sam. Keep it together. I'm on my way. And don't hook up BB either. You'll lead him straight to you. Oh, boy. Not that you would, since you hate them. I just did because I was scared to death. Disconnect. Now. Uh, already done. Don't let him take BB. How? If he shows up with his soldiers, what do you expect me to do? Fight back? If I have to choose between BB and myself, well... Uh... Mm, you won't. I'm ending the call. Sam. It's not easy being me. No wife, no children, no friends. And so I sought solace. Sought company in the dead. Over time, I made them a part of me. 70% of who I am today. But meeting you has opened my eyes. You're very special, Sam. So the codec works. That's so interesting. The the codec works. And instead of being in World War One, we've now been taken uh, ahead once again uh, to a different time. We're now in World War Two, and I've been shot, and I'm now been killed. <laughs> That's how good I am at navigating a war zone. Holy crap, man! The tank's just coming out of nowhere, too. Dude, this is insane. I feel like Kojima was playing this game, or like creating this game, and then he was like, hmm, I want to put, I want to have some World War stuff in here, too, for some reason. So, we're going into World War, <laughs> we're going into World War One and World War Two for some messed up segments. Apparently, this is like fucking where Cliff chills out in war zones because he's also after BB. Right, I think we found ourselves a sewer entrance. There you go. Switch functions, nice. Very cool. Okay. You did good, man. I'll see you soon. Oh, this is sick. So they're like... It's like they just want you to do first person in the sewers instead. First person horror simulator in the sewers. What's that? The red... Oh. Is the red glowing light coming from the baby? I guess we'll f follow and follow the baby. Ah, 
Check potential full height and compass mode's really cool. <gasps> I can hear BB! Yes! Sam, over here. Give me my child. No. Fine. The little one should be working again. Uh, let me see. Why'd you give it back to him? Oh. oh, well then. Oh no, he's got an attachment to dead man, not me. No! How dare you, dead man. Maybe this is a special beach for soldiers who died in battle. Maybe we should get the hell out of here. Yes. I'm surprised. I thought you would have abandoned BB by now. <laughs> Discard precious hardware? Never. Uh. So, do you still share memories? <sighs> I see. Stay here. Seems like I got other memories to tend to. I'm taking him down, as you get us both out of here. Uh, you know, Sam, I'm starting to understand why BB is so important to you. Huh? It's just a tool. Life and death are supposed to be irrelevant. But we've got attached to each other all the same, haven't we? <sighs> Kid's not just a tool. Name's Lou. Lou, huh? That's a good name. Uh We've been reunited, but it doesn't feel the same <laughs> because he's, he's like visually uh, responding to Dead Man and not me. He's got an emotional response to him. Right. Well. What does him spawning in like a baby cobweb symbolize? There we go. I was like, I need a weapon. Oh, this is fucked. Got the whale on the ground. Should we go take the shot? Oh! Right in the head. <laughs> take that. <laughs> Dude, this is nuts. What does it mean? Someone wants to defend himself. Keep an eye on my health.
Why is the 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 bell tolling have such an effect on me? We need reinforcements. <laughs> so the the bell tolling has such uh, an effect on his uh, how he's responding to things. Get my baby. What the fuck? Baby. This is my BB. God damn it. blood do anything? It does, right? Yeah. It does, but it's, it's, uh, it takes a little while. But it does do stuff. Moving into the bell tower. Don't let me down, boys. He was born to fight. Alright, I need to get this shit over here. Shotgun time. Down. We're done here. What in the world? Huh. Let's put this armor plate on. It's not like I've got anything. It's not like I've got anything else with me at the moment. That's right, baby. I haven't been able to do this for a while. No, it's my BB. Where's my baby? This game is just a fight for custody of the child, and and now Dead Man's come in as well. <laughs> Me, Dead Man, and Cliff. This is so bizarre. Oh. 
Dude, the music is so good. I really want to fight with me, bud. You're gonna lose. Say no, declined. Request denied. What's going to be the next time period we get transported in World War Three? Fucking cliffhanger that we're on, god damn it. New interview data required. Uh, report on the void out in Manhattan 1 to 3. Well, I hope Dead Man just automatically gets out of there too. We're in the private room. What the hell? Oh wow. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, this is terrifying. Holy shit. Oh, that's better. Oh my god. Lou. How that was horrific. No response. <laughs> well, look at that. That child's taking a shine to me. You two were out cold, so I had you brought here. You were right. Whatever you did back there returned us to our own world. I put your cargo and gear in your private box. You slept for a whole day, you know. Slept like the dead. <laughs> I'm already back in Capital Knot. Fragile's beach has been coming in handy. Sam, I owe you an apology. Lou was the name you were going to give your own baby if he'd had made it. I should have pieced it together sooner. Don't know what you're talking about. I found some records from ten years ago. A death, sudden, in the middle of a town. Young woman in the prime of her life. Nobody knew until it was too late. A void out. Her husband, who was a member of Bridges, had dooms. He tried, but he couldn't get to her in time. 
the whole town was wiped off the map, leaving nothing but a big crater and him. Because he was a repatriate. People wanted answers. Did the man hide his wife's body on purpose? The only survivor was the only suspect. He was easy to blame, and people did. And pretty soon, they were blaming Bridges too. The man felt responsible, so he left. And his wife, who died, her name was Lucy. She'd been pregnant, poor woman. They were going to name their son, Lou. Didn't happen. But it did. President Strand told me. She talked about you all the time. He didn't have to cut all ties and walk away, she said. You want to shut the fuck up? Calm down, Sam. Take a seat. I told you before about my body. 70% harvested from cadavers. Do you want to know the real reason why? Because the story you've heard is one I made up. The truth is, I'm Frankenstein's monster. Artificial, grown from pluripotent stem cells. And when that vital spark didn't manifest in all my organs, they replaced the defective ones with those of the dead. I never had a birthday. I'm a soulless meat puppet. No car, a dead man. People born the traditional way have beaches. You have one, BB too. But I have no such connections. No mother, no afterlife, no beach. You see now why I'm so obsessed with it all? Why I joined Bridges? The battlefield. Now that was an awful beach. But strangely, I didn't hate it because I knew you were coming for me. I've never felt that before. Connected to someone, anyone. You didn't have to cut all ties and walk away. The president was right about that much. It wasn't anything to walk away from. It's not like I was ever welcome there. Come on, even I was welcome. Oh, that. You were holding it. It's an old dog tag. U.S. issue. Wasn't easy prying it out of your hand. Clifford Unger, as you can see. Mm. I looked him up in our database. Found a match. He was U.S. Army Special Forces. Fought in Kosovo, Iraq, Afghanistan. That's him. Well, that's all I've managed to dig up so far. You must be caked in chiral matter from the battlefield. Time for a shower, I'd say. Oh, I won't be joining you this time. The Die Hardman issue is no longer a concern. I've seen to it that our conversations won't be recorded. Huh. Okay. He's managed to... He's managed to block out communication monitoring, apparently. Dude, uh, uh, what? <laughs> this the Clifford Unger, who used to be in the U.S. Special Forces, was also responsible for the whole BB thing. And it's updated to check on Lou. That's cute. Um, Lou and Lucy and Lisa. Let's not forget that Lisa is the mother of BB. I don't know if the all the names being like L words is related at all or relevant, but there's Lucy and Lisa, the two mothers, um, and Lou, 
being short for Lucy. Uh, dead man is literally Frankenstein's monster who's grown and then stuffed with dead organs, which is very interesting. Um, Clifford is a army soldier, but not from World War One or not from World War Two, specifically, because that wouldn't make sense. But the battles are all in that way. I love how I'm talking about things making sense as if um, <laughs> there's anything to grab onto right now that does make sense. Um, yeah, uh, very interesting. So we learn of a tragic event that has happened in Sam's past uh, where he was going to have a child with uh, a Lucy and that did not that did not happen. Uh, and then we've actually got his dog tag this time. So he does look like a physical, tangible thing, but I, I just, I, fucking, I, I don't know. Uh, we're going to activate this terminal because we do have uh, some mail and some data to check out. we got these interviews, and that's how we're going to round out today's episode. So let's read uh, the mail that we got and then the interview data, which I think is going to be much more uh, interesting. Yet again, another chip that we need to secure for... Um, for our partner Jay, we I still haven't done this yet. I still need to get to the distro center north of Mountain Knot City, so I haven't actually done this yet. But he's given us another order at the same time. So, Dead Man stuff. Sorry to bother you, Sam. I know you must be busy. I wonder if you could go and fetch a few things of Dead Man's. You remember the cabin you arranged to meet at, right? Well, the cabin itself got blown away by the supercell, but Dead Man's winter coat and boots should be somewhere nearby. Could you go pick them up and bring them to Mountain Knot City? It's standard issue bridges kit, but in a custom-made size. You can take the order at the delivery terminal at Mountain Knot City. It'd be great if you could help out with this one. I know, I know. Another day, another errand. But I hope you understand we're not just asking you to handle other folks' dirty work. No one else can do what you do. You realize that, don't you? And uh, I need to secure a chip in BT country. Saddle up Caballero. Uh, uh, this one won't be easy, but I know you got what it takes. I located another chip smack dab in the middle of BT country. At least we've got uh, Lou with us this time, so we can actually detect BTs again. Probably got swept up by a supercell and was carried all the way there. You don't want to get caught in the rain, so it might be a good idea to check the weather forecast before heading out. I'll mark the ship's location on your map once you've accepted the order. Your world's one hell of a place, Sam, full of all kinds of crazy, and that means something where I'm coming from. Man, if you'd seen the shit I saw in Haywood, but hey, if there's any man who can handle whatever life throws at him, it's you. The order's waiting for you at Mountain Knot City. Uh, so we've got three emails that we need to remember to do some stuff, three recovery requests to do. Uh, now let's read these interviews um, in other. So from the report of the void out in Manhattan, recording day and time unknown. Those were the doctor's final words saying who the hell at the time, no one knew whom he was referring. And to be fair, there were more pressing issues at hand. The doctor in question was a surgeon specializing in cesarean sections. The procedure he was undertaking at the time, however, was slightly unusual in that he was operating on a mother who had been declared brain dead seven months into her pregnancy. She had been placed on life support, but since her blood pressure was decreasing and the fetus was showing signs of uh, bradycardia, the decision was made to operate. Because the procedure was broadcast to medical researchers on a closed circuit network, we are fortunate to have a record of what took place. Per the footage, the incision was made without incident. The plan was apparently to remove the fetus from the womb and immediately place it in an NICU where it would receive the necessary care. Prior to this, the surgeon would, of course, have to cut the umbilical cord. This is the moment that changed everything. The moment the surgeon's hand touched the cord. In the instant he uttered his infamous last words, Who the hell? What? Number two. Following a number of tests and experiments, the conclusion was reached that the incident was an annihilation event brought about by the doctor's contact with whatever or whomever he had seen upon touching the umbilical cord. Though it eventually became apparent that the doctor had been referring to BTs, at the time no one could explain the underlying cause of the incident. Some later theorized that if the same conditions, brain dead mother, fetus, umbilical cord, could be recreated, then BTs could be detected and the mystery of the death standing would be solved. Instead, sorry, indeed, uh, this was the theoretical basis upon which the government's own experiments and investigations would be conducted. They called the fetuses they used bridge babies, and the experiments became known as the BB experiments. Soon after the government's program got underway, the tragedy of Manhattan occurred. 
the BB experiments were conducted at a Manhattan-based government facility in such extreme secrecy that little is known about them to this day. One thing that we do know for certain, however, is that the experiments ended in tragic failure and were directly responsible for the total annihilation of the island of Manhattan, as well as the death of the president who had been observing operations firsthand. He was succeeded by then Vice President Bridget Strand, who shortly after her inauguration put an end to all further BB experiments and had all data destroyed. With her strong and steadfast leadership in the wake of the void out, she made great strides in quelling the chaos and unrest that had spread throughout the nation. She vowed to rebuild America and devoted herself wholeheartedly to this end. In response, separatists who opposed Reconstruction emerged and steadily grew more aggressive in their activities. One faction even managed to acquire documents relating to the BB experiments, and some speculate that this data was used to restart them in secret. At that time, however, no BB units are known to have been successfully created, and BBs in general remain a taboo subject in government circles. What we do know, however, from what Dead Man told us is Strand um, kept the BB experiments going in secret, um, which is very, very peculiar. As, and then, obviously, this has now fallen into the hands of uh, the terrorists, and that's why BB units are out and about. It's very, it's very interesting stuff. Uh, but with this, we will bring this episode of Death Stranding to a close. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to this one where we did uh, some more prepper connections, uh, some fancy deliveries, and again, more weird stuff more weird stuff so i can't wait for more weird stuff next time uh we'll definitely be looking into those emails to uh, do those recovery requests uh i am going to do some off-screen uh, connections with preppers and increase my connection levels with them i'm assuming that will give more uh equipment technology uh potentially even better interview data uh we'll have to see uh what we get uh just following the pattern on what we've got from other preppers before It'll probably be more of the same. So I'm going to uh, build up those connection levels. Uh, but next time we will make more deliveries and see whatever the hell is going to happen next time, guys. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you then.